Hi, this is Olu Taiwa with Vision Guided Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. I said in one of our past programs that we're addressing Jesus' prayer or how he taught his disciples to pray. In that particular program, I went over the names of God, and I encourage you to find our channel on YouTube and watch that powerful expose on the names of God. It will bless you, bless you so much. But today I'm going to be talking about something that Jesus did when he introduced the Father. You see, in the Old Testament, God was viewed from a distance, as it were. Uh, many saw him as God. Also, they knew that he was a father or their father, but there wasn't still that kind of intimacy to, to address God. In fact, in the very program we had last, I talked about the name Adonai. The name Adonai means Lord. But it was a, a name that the Jews used instead of calling God Jehovah because they found, they found and realized that the name Jehovah was so holy that they were not worthy to even pronounce it. And hence, they used the word Adonai. But Jesus does something that is remarkable. And particularly, if you understand Jewish customs, you will see how significant what Jesus did was. Because prior to the incarnation of Jesus, or prior to Jesus coming into the earth, God was viewed more with trepidation, was viewed more from a perspective under the old covenant to be a God that was distant, and sometimes there were um, very there was they were hesitant to approach Him. In fact, you know the story of the of the tabernacle and the different uh, portions of the tabernacle how they were supposed to ceremonially keep themselves clean. And uh, it was something that every time the priest would go in, there was not a guarantee that they would come out alive. They had to be clean. So here comes Jesus on the scene, and he introduces a new paradigm. He is a total paradigm shift from what the old covenant taught about God. Because Jesus introduces God as Father. He doesn't just talk about him as Almighty God, which he is, but he takes all the qualities of God and simplifies it to us as Father. And that is what is powerful about the coming of Jesus Christ, the revelation that God is Father, God loves us. We as natural fathers have a, a love for our children, how much more our Heavenly Father. But something that is also powerful is that Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. However, what he didn't do was just give them a list to recite and to just keep repeating without any connection. No, the Lord's Prayer, as has been dubbed, really is a pattern of prayer. It doesn't mean you just recite it and recite it and recite it. No. It's really a pattern of prayer, principles that govern how we pray. So it's nothing wrong in reciting it if it is coming from the heart. But deeper into the Lord's Prayer, you see that Jesus himself is telling you that this is how you approach the Father. For instance, one thing Jesus does not teach his disciples here is, just go before God and just tell God all you need. No, there's a certain decorum. There's a certain reverence we should have for God. So when we mention all about the names of God, Adonai, Jehovah, Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, El Gibor, mighty God, El Elohim, everlasting God. When we name all the names of God, those are very reverent names. They, they, they reveal dimensions of God. But look at how Jesus talks about prayer. In Matthew chapter 6, I'll start from verse 9, and this is the NIV version. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Do you see what Jesus does here in this prayer? The first thing you see is that his approach, he says, this then is how you should pray. This is a pattern you should follow in your prayer. Our father in heaven. In other words, our father is not one who originates from the earth, which means what he's saying here is making a distinguishing factor. We're not talking about earthly fathers who are limited, even with best intentions, who are limited in their knowledge, who are lim limited in their power, who are limited in their wisdom. Jesus specifically addresses the person he's referring to, God the Father, by saying, Our Father who is in heaven. In other words, from not from this realm, not from this earth, not subjected to earth. That's a good point because in Genesis chapter 1, we read of creation. It says, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Which means if Elohim created the heavens and the earth, Elohim must be outside of this realm, the heavens, uh, heavenly bodies, and the earth. He must be bigger than it because if he's not bigger than it, he cannot create it. And he must exist before it. In other words, God that we're talking about, El Gibor, Elohim, he is not subject to time. He's outside of time. But when Jesus is saying, our Father which is in heaven, it is so deep. It is talking about a God that is not bound by time, is not bound by matter, is not bound by space. He is omniscient, omnipotent, I mean, and omnipresent. Our Father which art in heaven. Now look at the next statement. Hallowed be your name, which means your name be reverenced, your name be holy. In other words, when we've talked about all the names of God, I was talking to you in a previous program, all the names of God are encapsulated in that statement, hallowed be your name, because he's a multifaceted God. Whatever your need is, his name provides what that need is. Whatever the need is, his name provides. So if it is healing, he is Jehovah Rapha, like I said. Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd. You need guidance. He's everything. And the Bible says, Jesus says, hallowed be your name. He starts by saying, our father. And the next statement, he says, hallowed be your name. So all the great names of God that we discussed is belonging to this one true God, our Father. So we need to reverence His name. We just don't walk into the presence of God and not reverence His presence, not reverence His name. We don't come disrespectfully, just like we don't come into our natural Father's house and just act uh, in a way that is unbecoming. No, we come with reverence, with respect, with love, because really he first loved us in response to what he's already done for us. We're grateful. So you see here, that is very vital, very, very crucial. It says, hallowed be your name. Your name is holy. We reverence him. We, there's a weightiness when we talk about our father. And you see that throughout Jesus's ministry. When he talked about the father, he, that you could tell there was intimacy. That's another part. Our relationship with God will reflect also in our prayer. Our relationship with God will reflect also in our prayer. If our relationship with God is distant, it will be reflected in our prayers. Just like a natural father and his children, if there's no relationship going on, if there's no relationship with child or the child is distant from the, the father or the father is distant from the child, in the communication, you will, you will reflect that, that there's no intimacy. So if we're not really intimate with God, we're not spending time with God, we're not praying, we're not studying his word, we're not meditating upon his word, it will reflect in how we pray or don't pray. 
Some people, many times, because of even they've fallen short, they've sinned, they, said they run away from the Father instead of running to the Father. And Jesus revealed that very uh, scenario in what we've, has been dubbed the prodigal son, which really could be called the prodigal father. The father had so much love for his son, was always looking out for his son, but his son went on his own way. And then when he comes back, the father comes and, and, and grabs him, kisses him, and, and changes his life. The father was so happy to see him. And that's how our father is in heaven. He's happy to see us when we come. That's why the Bible says that when one sinner uh, comes to the faith, angels in heaven rejoice. That's how our father, there's like a party that goes on when somebody comes into the kingdom. That's how God sees us. That's how God loves us. God is not looking to punish us. He's not looking to, to make our lives miserable. No, God wants us to come to him in faith, knowing that he has our best interests at heart, that his purpose is for us. They are, they are mighty. His purpose is for us. They are, are good. That's what he has for us. He's a good God. He is a good God. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. I, I used to begin to see a pattern here. Now, you notice that up to this point, we don't even see anything mentioned about our need. So here we are praying. Jesus said, this is how you pray. Nothing about personal needs have even come up which means we come to the Father, we recognize the Father, we honor the Father, and then we also say, Father, we want your will to be done. We want your purposes to be fulfilled. So that's why many times it's actually a, a misnomer when somebody says, I have found my purpose. If what they mean is, I just came up with something that... It's my interest, and I want to do it. Do you know our purposes are already predetermined by God? So this is what we should be doing. I am fulfilling the purposes of God on the earth. Because really, that's what it is to be a kingdom person, to fulfill God's purpose. And in everything you do, be it your job, be it your vocation, be whatever it is, that you are a, a child of God, and therefore everything that you do, is to his glory, performing to the audience of one, the Lord Jesus. So read, let's read this again. It says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now look, look at that line. Your kingdom come, your rule and your reign come on earth. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now in heaven, God's will is perfectly fulfilled. Remember to like, subscribe, and click on the bell so you will never miss any episode from our channel. God bless you.